Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin Assalatu wassalamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Bismillahirrahmanirrahim So Jazakallah khair uh, Inshallah for all those viewers who are just tuning in We have uh, an excellent lineup of speakers And Inshallah in this session we will have uh, um, Three of those uh, great speakers uh, You know touching upon the subjects uh, Pertaining to the life of the Prophet Sallallahu and his seerah With that we will uh, commence the question and answer session i would like to invite all the um the speakers to hopefully join me in on the screen so the first question that i have um is for sister hina um and i was thinking you know while listening to your uh, your discussion um that there's a big problem that that we notice within the youth um with the with the you know the obscenity the immorality in the society that it's become a identity issue or you know, maybe sometimes they live like um, two different lives. So as a as a parent, alhamdulillah, and as a Islamic educator, do you have any tips or advice for those youth and the parents? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Um, I, I, at this point, um, this is a very good question, but I would not uh, be in a position to advise the youth. I would rather advise the parents and instead of putting or doing a blame game on the youth and saying that the youth are like this, the youth have been doing that, us as elders, older members of society need to check our own selves and our relationship with the youth and see what it is that we have done or what it is that we could do to better the condition of the youth uh, it was the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who mentally freed the youth of his time by giving different responsibilities, given, giving them different sort of uh, uh, you know, rights that I see even in this society being a, considering themselves a very free society. We have again mentally arrested the youth, mentally arrested them. Uh, and and flooded them with the, all of this obscenity and then at the end of the day we go and we blame them uh, for their condition this is not a problem of the youth yes everyone is responsible for his or her own actions but we have to see what sort of legacy what sort of environment are we leaving behind who are we as parents what do we do as parents to dignify ourselves with the example of the Prophet Sallallahu to even say to any of the youth that why are you doing this, why are you doing that. So my advice for the elders of the community is to give the youth the space and the respect that they deserve and that inshallah ta'ala after time that will reciprocate uh, back to uh, the uh, older generations inshallah. Exactly. Um, next question, uh, Dr. Badawi, um, and I know you touched upon this in your in your discussion, but maybe uh, a bullet form of it is, you know, as you mentioned, under the veil of freedom of expression, the West and has gone on to conduct several blasphemous incidents, especially the media. Um, me personally, as uh, as Sharif, as you know, um, a professional working in Detroit, Michigan, what can I do, you know, to what is the right thing for me to do at this point? Okay, the um, risk, the diagnosis precede the prescription. Uh, there are a variety of people who swallow all this false information uh, for a variety of reasons. There may be some people who have this kind of sense of superiority or racist uh, supremacy uh that anything that fits this stereotype in their minds they take it but there are also uh people who in my humble understanding uh, the ones that are described in the Quran they don't understand they don't know and that's the only exposure they had to Islam. So it goes back to our own responsibility instead of simply defending to uh, you know, avoid and correct in a positive way rather than occasionally respond to some incident here and there. 
But what specifically you can do? I don't know. There is something that was tried a, f a few years back when there's also many defamatory statements made about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I forgot the year, but I remember that uh, CARE, for example, the Council on American-Islamic Relations, instead of arguing and responding or answering, they said, we have a free copy of the life of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They chose one. They, I think they collected a good amount of donations for that and publicized it all over. Anyone who needs a copy will send to them for free. Of course, even when you're professional, <laughs> you may not have all these resources, but as a community, even within, for example, uh, Michigan, whether you're in Detroit or other places, if you take that as a community project, a multi-organization, the various masjid, Islamic centers, and those who care, uh, raise funds for that and announce it to everyone in a positive way, non-defensive. Uh, I think it, ha it would have a great impact. But let me conclude with one observation. You might say, what is, what's that going to do, you know, for 330 million Americans and all of that? We do whatever we can and, and spread that information, and, uh, make tawasul with other organizations, other major locations to do the same thing. It's difficult to coordinate it nationally, but at least in, in a given region, um, people can do that. You can't imagine the effect of that. There have been people who have been abusing the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I think one in Netherlands. And his curiosity to read the Quran led him to become a Muslim and defend Islam. And uh, it was reported that uh, after various incidents, whether it is Salman Rushdie or any other issues that Muslim behaved in a very erratic way, people were just, uh, you know, eager to understand that strange Islam that called for killing and this and that. So we say the uh, special in New York, maybe Sheikh Abdul Rahman might have been aware of that also. They say that the copies of the translation of Quran were flying off the shelves. And there were reports of many people accepting Islam. In fact, after all the abuse of the Prophet وسلم, by his people and later others, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, many of those who were trying to kill him, including Umar, abused him and mistreated him and Al-Ta'if turned to Islam because they saw the, the concern for people, as Sheikh Abdul Rahman very rightfully said, he is interested in saving souls and even in the highest of hurt, he says, Allahumma hadi qawmi fa innahum la Oh, Allah guide my people. They know not what they're doing. So whatever little we do, if we can have books, sometimes you can have smaller brochures to be distributed on a large scale. Some, some of them, as including maybe some statements of people who are Westerners, but they say fair words about the process. We do our best and let that, that grow. And alhamdulillah, in this blessed convention, we have brothers and sisters from a variety of countries. Take that message, try to do it. Jazakallah khair, Badawi. So I think um, that's an excellent reminder for all of us to take this opportunity to educate and be a representative of Islam, of the Prophet Sallallahu of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala on this earth. And I think one of the previous speakers in the session, Sister Faria, was mentioning that um, she carries these one-minute cards uh, that Alhamdulillah, Why Islam and Gain Peace have to distribute to people as they as she engages with. So I think that's a, an excellent um, idea and advice. Um, the next question that I have is for uh, Sheikh Abdul Rahman Khan. Um, you know, of course, that uh, the love of the Prophet Sallallahu is a part of our Iman. But... Um, my question is that how do we express the, this love um, in terms of action rather than in terms of, you know, verbal? Yeah. <clears throat> Jazakallah khair. Uh, there are several ways of expressing this love for the Prophet Sallallahu No one can do it better than the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu 
for the early generations, those who came after them. And their way of expressing love, first and foremost, was to do exactly what they are told by the Prophet You know, today people spend, what, tens of billions, maybe hundreds of billions of dollars on, on advertisement using celebrities. Just uh, five minutes with the Coca-Cola. This is not Coca-Cola. <laughs> Just five, I mean, five <laughs> five seconds of Coca-Cola and, and for that five seconds they pay millions and, and, and you know tens of millions of dollars because that celebrity whatever he drinks whatever he does whatever he wears or she wears whatever they do this is what the human nature that you love someone you want to to do exactly so in, Ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma he used to walk like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi to that extent and sometimes he would walk and there's a tree he would stop on the tree. so somebody said why did you stop on the tree?" he said i stopped here because my beloved Rasul rested here and i just wanted to do that so from that you know from that minimal aspect of or, or that minute aspect of following him to following the message that he has brought with to be part of that mission of establishing la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah to know the correct way how he did it and not just any fashion. Allah did not send anyone to guide this hum human being. He sent Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so the greatest love and the greatest expression of that love is truly to, to follow him in every possible way, which means you have to have knowledge what he did here. You have to take time off to know how he did it. And yes, we do have that connection as one of the companions he one day he was looking at the prophet sallam and and he became sad and the prophet sallam said what saddened you he said ya rasulullah in this world we can see you but in the hereafter you're going to be in this high high stage and we will not be able to see you and then the verse was revealed that those who you know will be allah the messenger will be in the company of the siddiqin which that they will be in that company. So, yes, um, there will be that um, emotion and the love from the heart and expressed by the companions, expressed by even catching the water he make with wudu to the point of being part of this mission. And I think that's the way we should show that love to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I think there's a question uh, from one of the viewers, and it's a follow-on to your responses. Uh, the question is, how do I instill the love of Prophet Wasallam in my kids uh, in addition to praying for them? You know, I will give you my very good question. And I think um, one of the things that really brought out tremendous love as a child growing up in a village and my mother may Allah bless her soul she was not a knowledgeable person but she would sit and tell us so many stories of the prophet mm -hmm. and put it into perspective to the point that she would tell us that the prophet used to like this um what you call italian squash over here i've never seen a hadith like that i've studied I've studied hadith a lot and I've never come across that hadith, but she, she instilled. And we used to play with the seed because the seed is a little slippery thing. So as kids, you would even play with the seeds of, of that uh, uh, vegetable. And she said, don't do that. You don't you know that if it's Allah Muslim, love that. Word. So I think from a small uh, time, now we have access to a lot more, um, you know, uh, programs maybe some some kids uh, programs that you can sit with them and let them uh dwell in that as opposed to uh, just packing information on them and i think um it has to be something that you discuss on a regular basis you cannot assume that the child will grow up to love the prophet the child, the child does just does not grow up like that to love the Prophet because you know the chairman uh, of MTV, what he said when he was uh, giving his retirement speech, he said, 
you know, we don't shoot for 14 years old. We shoot for far less than that because by the time they're 14 years old, we already control their minds. So we cannot assume that, you know, we are going to leave them for somebody else to take care of them. We have to play our part in sitting with them, talking. Let Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam be a discussion when we have some family time, especially children. They love to hear stories of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So I would, I would start off from there and maybe each child, uh, depends on how many kids you have. Let them come up with the hadith. Let them come up with a little research. And at the dinner table or the family time, open that discussion. Perfect. Zakallahu khairan. Um, so, inshallah, with that, I would like to thank all of the speakers in this session. We have uh, concluded the session, and inshallah, we have an excellent lineup of speakers coming up next. So, Zakallahu khairan.